Hi, my name is Marcus and welcome to Servant King. The purpose of this short introduction video is to give you a gist of what the website is about. I've made a great discovery. It's something a lot of people are looking for but can't quite figure out. Now this discovery I made was not a good discovery. In fact, it was a bad discovery. But it led to something really great. And this discovery is the greatest hoax that has ever been played on man. I call it the perfect swindle. Yes, we've all been swindled through an elaborate scheme. Now this is not a hoax like a joke. This is a cruel hoax and deadly serious. The effects of this hoax cause almost all the pain and suffering in the world, and it is worldwide. A hoax is a trick and its intention is to deceive you, to gain an advantage over you. And a swindle deprives you of something through deceit and is accomplished through a fraudulent scheme. What makes this hoax and swindle extremely evil is you don't even know you've been tricked or deceived. So what is this hoax? How have I been deceived? Well, here's the answer. You have been tricked into voluntarily giving up something while believing you still have it. In the end, you will learn it's really just an illusion, but does it ever work well? It works 100%. It is complete. In other words, you've been cheated out of something, you don't even know you've lost it. Now, you must admit that's a good trick. When you believe you still have it, when in fact you've lost it. To add insult to injury, it turns out you gave it up voluntarily. Now get ready for the real shocker. The thing that you gave up voluntarily, you had to steal it first. The most perfect swindle. Only the most diabolical mind could think this up and get you to do it without you even knowing. And in a moment I will tell you what you did. First I will tell you who I am and the reason for this introduction video. I'm just a normal, regular type of guy, born in a ready-made society, raised in our family's religion, sent to school to be educated, average right across the board, worked hard, played by the rules, as you would say. Then something happened that felt like it stripped me of all my dignity. This thing that happened was wrong, and no matter how I tried to conform my mind to the fact that it could be right, nah, it was still wrong. Nobody could help me, not a court, not a lawyer, not my member of parliament, not the prime minister, the queen, the pope, not even my mom. I just had to know how something that is wrong could be right. So I started looking, I went on a quest. As I was looking, strange events occurred. Things that would make you say, what's going on here? What's this really about? What's the big secret? Something is going on that I'm not supposed to know about. So on my quest, I discovered things that were unbelievable. But then I confirmed that these unbelievable things were actually happening. So I decided I need to expose these things in a series of presentations for reasons which you will learn as we go on. Now, I've never done a presentation before, and how do you present things that are unbelievable? Nobody will believe it. Why? Because it's unbelievable. So I read an article on the internet about presentations. It said the two key elements of a presentation are to inform and persuade. This article said that the credibility of the speaker is more important than the information to make people believe. The problem I have with that is, how do you know the information is true? The answer is the credibility of the speaker. So if I told you I have a doctorate degree in linguistic studies, both in English and in Greek, I also have a master's degree in public law, family law, and gravitational law, and have published four peer-reviewed articles in the Journal of Universal Knowledge. You would probably believe what I tell you. We are trained this way. In fact, if I tell you something, you would believe it because of my credibility. Then you will go tell your friend, did you know such and such as that? You will take what you believe and you will make it what you know. But belief is the absence of knowledge. You do not need to believe what you know to be true. So if I persuade you to believe what I'm going to tell you, that would only change your belief. You still would not know anything. So I will be giving you the evidence, the facts, and the proof. No persuasion. Then you will not say, 
I do not believe that, you will say, I did not know that. This article on presentations also said you should have some sort of grabber. Tell them something that is shocking or that will grab their attention. Well, I think I have a few grabbers. They may grab your attention. Number one, did you know that no one in Canada or the U.S. or in any country owns any property? You do not own your house, your car, your TV, your pizza, socks, or underwear. You don't own your children. Somebody does, but it's not you. Hell, you don't even own your own name. How's that grab you? <laughs> and I will be giving you the facts, the evidence, and the proof. Everyone in Canada is above the law. I know it is hard to believe, but absolutely true. Money is not a store of wealth. It is a store of someone's debt. You have never paid for anything in your entire life. I know it's hard to believe, but when you understand what money is, you've never paid for anything in your entire life. Everyone in Canada and the U.S. is licensed to give legal advice. In fact, your right to give legal advice is protected. It is needed. It is required. Or you couldn't have a legal system. When you receive something, you are getting it for the second time. Funny, huh? When a police officer stops you for speeding, it's because you told him to. No court in Canada or the U.S. can or will take judicial notice of the law that says thou shalt not steal. Not a single court anywhere. Your legal system cannot work with that law. It's impossible. Every man being held in jail is there because of what they believe, their conviction. Overturn your conviction with the proper authority and you can get out. Your birth certificate does not certify the birth of a living individual. What? No. Oh. You think that's your birth? Certifies your birth? No, no. A license is permission to do something illegal. Yeah. It is the intent to commit a crime. Now we just need the act. So if you have any licenses, that's the prima facie evidence, the proof of your intention to commit a crime. I want to commit a crime. I want to break the law. Any job requires you to transact public business dishonestly for private gain. How's that grab you? <laughs> Words are a secret code unless they are defined. And no one that is deceived has ever known it. For if you did, you wouldn't be deceived anymore. You see, deception is not the lack of knowledge. Not knowing something and then learning it does not mean deceived. You just did not know it till now. Deception is when you are misled deliberately from the truth to something that is false, tricked on purpose, and you don't even know you've been tricked. That is deception. Deception is a fraud, and fraud is a crime. The swindle can only work if you are an unwitting accomplice, a party to it. And when you realize you've been deceived, the lying deceiver, the real fraudster, the master of confusion, looks at you and says, this is what I thought you believed. And you are entitled to believe whatever you want. Free will, gotta love it. I have come to know that people do not even know why they believe what they believe. People do not even know how People do not even know they have given up something. So why go looking for an answer to a problem when you don't even know there is a problem? You are not confused. So maybe you don't want to know. Live in ignorant bliss. I need to tell you that being deceived has nothing to do with being stupid. You can only discover deceit by learning the truth. What you believe will not do it. When you learn how and why you were deceived and the choices you made and then continue in them, then you can no longer claim you were deceived or scream fraud. Then if things do not go well for you, then you can say, boy was I stupid. You and I both have a very good sound brain. It's just that it's been messed up a bit, deliberately and for a purpose. There are many people who feel there is something wrong in the world, concerning all sorts of things. You will learn that every one of these problems is the result of owning no property. Every last single time. 
But to understand why you own no property is the reason this is going to be a long story. And the story gets even longer to understand the solution. There are patriot groups, common law groups, tax protesters, free men societies, Occupy Wall Street movements, aboriginal groups, religious groups, all who say things are wrong in this world. Then there are those that think everything's fine. Or even if they think it's not, what can I do about it? But at least these groups are looking for answers. They know something is wrong. This is a commendable start. But they need to change direction. They're going the wrong way. There are many groups and individuals out there that have found and exposed things that just make no sense to them. But they're written off by the majority as abnormal, peculiar, radical extremist wingnuts. Much of what they've discovered is in fact true, but they are trying to make the corruptible incorruptible. And that'll never happen. Knowing the problem is not enough. You need to know how it happened and why it happened to find the solution. Everyone looks for someone to blame for their misfortune. If you own no property, you have a misfortune. But the choices you made were not forced on you. They were only, although you were only enticed and suborned, although through fraud. In other words, the stage was set for you, prepared for you. Now just choose it. The reason you were enticed to participate in a swindle is because the illusion, the trick, the swindle cannot work without you. It cannot work otherwise. It would have no value. It requires you. So what did we do? Well, in a nutshell, you lost what was yours because you took what was not yours. What did we take that was not ours? Everything. What did we lose that was ours? Everything. Hmm? What did we take that was not ours? Power. What did we lose that was not ours? Power. What did we take that was not ours? A trust. What did we lose that was not ours? A trust. It doesn't matter what you put in there. It works the same. A swindle is always the opposite of the truth. So it doesn't matter what you put into that equation, it works out the same. It is always something backwards, the opposite of the truth. This is how a swindle works. How can this be if it was given us? We were to accept it, not to steal it and make it our own. We are totally unaware that we bear and suffer daily the penalty of a breach of trust. Today, all that you have or hold is borrowed from a misplaced trust. You are borrowing and using what is not yours. You own nothing. And the borrower is always servant to the lender. Because of this choice you made, you are barred for life and must plead at the bar for all you desire. This is called beggary. Well, you can call it pleading, praying, whatever. It's beggary. You have to beg when you own nothing. I see people in courts every day pleading and begging for things. I see people in banks every day begging for money. I see people in the streets carrying signs every day begging for something to change. I see people every day lined up trying to get a license to do something illegal. Yes, you are all beggars and you've turned your children into beggars too. People who own property do not beg. They work and they mind their own business. There is a way to regain what you've lost. But there is only one way, and it is not a matter of law. And there is only one solution. There are not two, three, five solutions. But you must accept the solution to receive it. The answer should be self-evident, but it's not. This is the genius of the swindle. And only by understanding how this all works will you understand the solution. There is a subtlety to this, very hard to grasp. But I must warn you that much has been done to keep you from finding it. And second, much has been done to be sure that if you do find it or are shown it, you will not accept it. You will reject it. Now, that is someone's extraordinary good control of your mind. My only guarantee to you is, is that after you go through these programs, you will never be the same again. You better be sure you want to be changed. For those who are content in their way of life, I'm sorry to have bothered you. Goodbye. Please go back to whatever you were doing. For those who need to know, take your time and listen carefully to the programs. They are confusing. It is important to watch the presentations in the order they are presented. 
I hope these videos will become for you a blessing in the skies. Thank you for listening. Till then, my name is Marcus.